talked last night about what it would take to become a provocative therapist. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was talking again this morning with one sort of the participants saying, you know, it seems like it could be dangerous for somebody to, to try to do what you do who doesn't have, you know, 50 years of experience as you. Yeah, but when I discovered it, I was age 31, so I didn't have 50 years of experience. Okay. So, but, what, what do you think about that? What would it take for somebody to... Well, it's like I, I told you, this, this, it's, a good, it's a good question, but at any rate, in Berlin, which I've done about seven to nine workshops, I was just telling uh, Doug, there's this tall, skinny psychiatrist, and uh, he was, he's really, I have a great deal of fondness and affection in my heart for him, and uh, Helmut, and... Uh, he would stand up when he would ask a question or something like that, you know. And I'd say, you can, help me. You can sit down. And say, people say, no, let him stand up. We can see him and we can hear him so much better, you know. And he was real tall, I don't know, 6'6 six, six or something. <clears throat> so he asked this question. What could you um, uh, outline for us the, um, the prerequisites for becoming an effective provocative therapist. I said, yes. And he said, well, will you? Oh, I said, yeah, okay. So at any rate, uh, um, I said, all right, to begin with, I don't know, hold up finger number one and stuff like that, and 78 Kugelschreibers were poised over the tablets, you know, and I said, it helps to be born Irish. And, and this whole group went, oh, like <laughs> burst out laughing, and Helmut says, see, Frank, there you do it again. I mean, he said, our minds just don't work as fast as yours. I said, well, Helmut, then you could do it slowly, you know. He said, ah, 